everybody doing today? Good. Good? Looking good? Happy? Right? Refreshed? Everybody have a good breakfast? I had a big breakfast. <laughs> I'm ready for more. So. Uh, <laughs> get myself in trouble here. Uh, I want to read with you from Psalm 27 before we begin our study this morning. And I was just reading in this. Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. That's my prayer this morning. I, I don't know that we'll be here all day. And I promise you, I'll, I'll keep it short. I don't think we'll be here all day. But you and I, even when we leave this building, can dwell in the house and the presence of the Lord. Amen. There is nowhere that his kingdom is not. So let's pray with that in mind. Father in heaven, we just thank you and praise you. Holy Spirit, we welcome and invite you. Lord Jesus Christ, be exalted in our time today. We have come because we desire to be in your house. We desire to be in your presence. And I know that you will not disappoint as you, have, as you have been with us in the time of worship and giving, Lord, I pray that you would be with us in this time of your word. Help us, Father, to give our best attention to your word. We are speaking about the King of kings, the King of the universe, King eternal, who is in our presence. And we praise you and thank you for that. Lord, all glory and honor is due to you, and we, we intend to give it today. Amen. So we praise you and we thank you, Father. Lead us into the worship of your word. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Would you turn with me in your Bibles and your handheld devices to John chapter 17? God has just been so good this season of my life. I, I just have to tell you. And, and when I say he's been so good, he's been so faithful just to show up. You know, just to show up, and, and I don't even know about it, I don't think about it, I just say, okay, God, what would you like me to share? It's really that simple. <laughs> I don't, you know, I used to just like really like overwork it and complex it, and it's really that simple. And so, uh, if you're on the elder team or the leadership team, when I first got here, how many months ago? Uh, not, yeah, a few months ago, I gave, didn't I give you guys a schedule of what my sermons were going to be. I figured this will be like, like I'm game playing the first 10 plays of like a football game. I'm game. So this will, this will hit the ground running and we'll, we'll kind of go from there. And last week, I intended to talk about prayer and I intended to talk about the American soldier, not even realizing six months ago that that would fall on Veterans Day. Wasn't that amazing? And so, Man. yeah, yeah, amen. But he knew, you know, he's like, no, no, I, I, I want you to do something special on that day. And, and, and today is the same way. I really didn't know what I was going to share on Thanksgiving, you know. And, and, and to me, I, it had to be about Thanksgiving. And uh, some of you guys know, and actually, I think, Brandon, it was you, when I came candidating, you said, oh, don't talk about me. When, when I came candidating, I think maybe it was you or Leslie had to ask, what was I reading? What was I currently reading in the Bible? Uh, maybe it wasn't you, but I think it was. But that's okay. And I, at the time, I was just captivated by John. And I was just really studying John, and so uh, I wrote this verse down uh, to talk about. In, in case nothing else came up, I was going to talk about this passage uh, on this day. And as we go through, you'll see just the amazing, like God just lines these things up kind of thing. So anyways, if you're with me in your Bibles or your handheld device, we're in John chapter 17. This is the upper room. Christ is talking to just his closest closest uh, followers before his um, sacrifice. And I'm going to read with you verses uh, 17, 17 through 21. And verse 19 was the verse that caught me, arrested me in this passage. Jesus speaking here, red letter stuff. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Verse 19. For their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves may also be sanctified in truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, for those who, but for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe 
that you sent me. And Father, we just thank you and praise you for your word. I want to look a little bit at this passage, and then I want to share with you what God has kind of put on my heart. He says first, uh, Jesus speaking first, he says, sanctify them in the truth. And in the English language is a lot different than, than ancient Hebrew and Greek and stuff like that, in that they have, we have one word that can mean a lot of things, and they have a lot of words that each mean what they mean kind of thing. So I want to share with you what he says, sanctify them in the truth. What he's talking about is not accuracy here. The word, the original word that was used was aletheia, A-L-E-T-H-E-I-A, -E -E in case you're taking notes. Hopefully that was slow enough for you to jot it down. And, and the word means sincerity. It means sincerity. It's, it's honesty. Sanctify them in sincerity. Sanctify them in honesty. Sanctify them in the love of truth. And, and I think what Jesus is talking about, if I understand this correctly, is is sanctify them in sincerity, as in, let them be present right now in this moment. Let them be present right now in this moment. Father, as I am, as I am always present with you, he's, there was not a time that Jesus was apart from God other than on the cross. And he broke his heart, didn't he? Father, do not forsake me. He was always with the Father. He was just 100% there. He wasn't thinking about tomorrow's schedule. He wasn't thinking about what am I going to pick up at Tops at the end of the week when I get paid. He wasn't, he was just, he was there with the Father. And this is what he's talking about, I believe. He's saying, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is always, always present with us. We might not always be present with the Word of God. I, I'm there sometimes, I, and I admit that, and I'll be humble and honest with you, but the Word of God is always present with me. It's always there for me. I can, I can crack it open, and even if I don't have a Bible, I can just pray, Lord, renew in me the things, remind me the things that I have read and studied and come to believe. Sanctify them in the truth. Your Word is truth. He's, th this truth thing is important. He uses this word, truth, three times in as many verses. I think that Jesus is making a point that when we're together, especially in times like this, that we be 100% present. Amen? Amen? That we sincerely be here with each other and for each other. And then he continues in verse 18, As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. If you wonder how difficult your life might get... <laughs> As he sent us, and as the Father sent him into the world, he sends us into the world. But the other side of that coin is if you're wondering how blessed your life is going to be. To have those sweet times of fellowship with the Father. To have those times with other brothers and sisters in Christ. When, man, the world, it, let it pass. The Lord is here. Amen? Amen? You'll have that blessing as well. Verse 19, this is the verse that caught me and made me stumble quite a bit. Uh, for good reasons. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. This is Jesus saying this. For their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they themselves also may be sanctified in the truth. There's that word truth again. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those who also uh, believe in me through their word. So Jesus is saying that he sanctified himself for you and I. Today. He sanctified himself for you and I today. And not just in an exclusive for you and I today, but for everyone that will hear your testimony as you go out into the world. Amen. He, he's working through you in an amazing way. You don't even realize that God is working through you. And I just keep I just keep telling the story. Keep telling the story and let God be the hero of that story. And, and you'll surprise and be surprised and amazed at how wonderfully. He does things. And then verse 21, this is, the whole, this is the whole reason of the sanctification. He gives us two things. One is that they may all be one. That they may all be one. That we could be one. As we're gathered to get together today to listen to this word, whether, whether you're here in this sanctuary right now, or maybe you're, you're watching the, uh, the video later on, we're one. Amen. We are one because Christ sanctified and set this moment apart that wherever you are, whenever you're hearing this message, 
we are one in Christ Jesus. So, so first was that they may be one, that we might be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. And then verse, uh, the, the second part here, the, the verse, the number two is, that they may be in us. Wow. Wow. That they may be in us. That Christ had sanctified himself so that you and I could be one, but that you and I could be fully present in the Spirit with God the Father. Right? Yeah. Yeah. you got to let that sink in. The Father is here. The Father is here. Now, he's, he's not in the wood. He's spirit, not flesh. The Holy Spirit is here. Amen. Opening our minds right now as we hear this. Pricking our hearts right now as we hear this. And Christ Jesus is here being glorified. Right now. Right now. It's amazing. And then he continues. Yeah, woohoo. That's like our battle cry. Woohoo. That they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that, so here's the why, so that the world may believe that you sent me. Jesus is glorified when we are together in peace. Jesus is glorified when we are together worshiping. And the world knows it because of it. Amen? Our neighbors aren't here, in church, aren't here in church, but they know that we're here in church. And they know that we're here because we know we serve a risen Savior. Amen? Amen. It's a powerful witness that we gather week after week. That we give of our time, talent, and treasure week after week. We give because we are serving a living, risen Savior. We are serving the King of the universe who is here and present. Amen? This is a good verse, isn't it? <laughs> I love this passage. There are a few passages in, in John that just stopped me. Well, I want to talk about Matthew Henry for a little bit. And, and all of the quotes that I have from here forward are either from Scripture or from Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry uh, lived, he was born in 1662, uh, went to the Lord in 1714. I think, do we have a picture of Matthew Henry up there? We go back one. He's a handsome fellow, isn't he? He's a handsome fellow. <laughs> he was a Welsh-born nonconformist. I thought that was interesting as I looked that up. A nonconformist. Any any nonconformists? I'll let you raise. Okay, I was going to say I'll let you raise your hand. I won't raise it for you. He was a Welsh-born nonconformist who was the son of a nonconformist, uh, Philip Henry. Uh, and Philip Henry was actually an ejected English cleric. They said, "Nah, your theology is just." A little too radical for us. You, you just, and so they ejected him as a cleric. Uh, and what that nonconformist thing means was that it didn't matter to him what the tradition of the day was. He went to the Word of God. And that's why for 500 years, we've loved, 400 years, we've loved his, his, his Word. Amen. It didn't matter what was going on that day. He went to the Word of God. And he wrote six volumes. I encourage you, you can usually get them on sale. He wrote six volumes on the entirety of Scripture. It's beautiful. He set aside whether there were Calvinists in the audience or Arminians in the audience. He set aside whether there was Baptists in the audience or Methodists in the audience. He set aside whether there was Americans in the audience or Arabs in the audience. It did not matter to him. What does the Word of God say? It's, it's so powerful. And so when he looked at this, he... He, from this very simple passage, he saw two things. And I want to share these two things with you. These, these two points that I have are actually his two points. I want to give him full credit for it. The first point is this, is that Christ speaks with great assurance of his own mission. Christ speaks with great assurance of his own mission. Christ knew why he was in this world. He wasn't deceived. He wasn't unsure. If we read in verse 18, it says, As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. He knew where he was coming from, didn't he? He was very clear that he had great assurance of that. 
that the Father had sent him. He was commissioned by the Father, and it didn't matter what the, the traditions of the day said. It didn't matter what people on either side of him said. He knew he was from the Father. And so Jesus was able to speak into people's lives with power and authority because he was representing the Father. Here is, and this is Matthew Henry speaking, here is Christ's designation, designation of himself to the work and office of mediator. I sanctified myself. And I underline this in my notes. He entirely devoted himself to the undertaking and all parts of it, especially that which he was now going about, the offering up of himself without spot unto God by the eternal spirit. He is, now this is the, this is the part that, that messes me up in verse 19. He is as the priest and the altar sanctified himself as the sacrifice. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. Amen. I can't, amen. I can't do that, just so you know. I can't sanctify myself. I'm, I'm a fallen, uh, apart from Christ, I'm a fallen human being. I've done things that have, that have broken relationships with people in my life and with family members. I've said things and I've, and I've repented as best I'm able. But apart from Christ, I'm a fallen piece of this creation. But Christ Jesus was that one who was born without sin, who chose to live a life without sin because he let the Father use the Spirit to work in his life every day, every moment of every day. And so he is the priest. He is the one who's coming as a representative of us much higher than us, but as a representative of us. And he is coming to the altar where the sacrifice will be made, and he is the altar. It's, this is, it just gets crazy. It's such a, simple, such a simple line, but it's so deep and so rich. So he comes as the priest to the altar, which is himself, which is the only place that appropriate sacrifice can be made, and then he himself is the sacrifice. Wow. Christ spoke with great assurance of his own mission. He knew from where he came. He knew who sent him. And he knew why he was here. And he spoke with such great authority. The second thing that Matthew Henry points out is that Christ speaks with great satisfaction of the commission that he had given his disciples. He was, he was really glad that he put us to work. And he's like, this is good work. This is really good. I'm glad that they get to do this. In verse 18, he says, I also have sent them into the world. It is by his authority. See, when I stand up here and I, and I say, we have to reach out to our community, I'm not telling you because that's my great idea. I'm telling you because that is Christ's commission over your life. And when I tell you to serve and love the poor, the widow, and the orphan, it's because that's what Christ would want from you. I'm simply passing on his message. And so as he was sent into the world, he sends us into the world. And why? In verse 21, that we may be one and that we may be in him. Do you want, you want like a, you know, a pretty okay Christian life? No, no. Take its paid at the end, right? Or do you want to thrive? Do you want to really thrive in this valley? Do you want to wake up in the morning and go, yes, excellent, it's Monday. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> excellent. You're getting ahead of yourself. I can't wait. Every day, I want to get out of bed and I want to do the things that God has called me to do. And that just puts joy in my step. That helps me to, to, to go on when the road is hard. There, you see, there's something beyond complex. It's not just complex. It is beyond complex in this st simple statement of Christ. We are changed and we are offered something never otherwise attainable without his sanctification. Amen. We could not have what is promised to us without his sanctification and his ultimate sacrifice. That's powerful. He not only provided the means but the method, and we should follow likewise. We should follow likewise. As the Father sent him into the world, he sends us into the world. 
And if you're not sure what that looks like, we have an owner's manual. <coughs> he, did what, he did what mankind could not do so that mankind could eventually do what we were created for. And that is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. You know, it, it's amazing to me, and I think about this, that, that Christ Jesus, you know, God created us and breathed life into us and made us living beings. And I have a great wife, and I have wonderful kids, and I have, some grand, I have a grandson and a granddaughter on the way, and we're excited about that. But if that's all there was, and at the end there was nothing, that's a pretty sad existence. Just to be on this earth for the spot of time. But Christ Jesus has made it possible that we can live forever. Amen. Ever. That forever I can enjoy the company of my wife. Forever I can enjoy the joy of my children and grandchildren. Forever I can be in the presence of God Almighty and enjoy Him fully. Forever. And I couldn't do that unless Christ did what He did. I mean, He is such a friend to sinners, isn't He? Yes. He didn't have to do any of that. But he chose to do that in his love for us. I don't tell you, I, I don't know what you've got to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. I gotta be thankful for that. Amen. I am so thankful for that. When I look at my wife and know that we'll be together forever in the presence of God. I'm thankful for that. When I look at my children and my grandchildren, and when I look at my friends and my family and think, man, we can be together forever in the presence of God. I'm thankful for that guy. I don't know about you, I'm thankful for that. Matthew Henry continues, Whatever there is in the death of the saints that is precious in the sight of the Lord. You know, what he's saying is, there's, there's something about martyrs that the Lord just loves. I mean, he just loves those who will give of themselves. Whatever is precious in the sight of the Lord, it is owing to the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, God is not happy that you suffer for suffering saints. God is happy that you suffer as his son suffered for the sake of his son. Amen. It, it, we find our purpose and our meaning in our existence as we live our lives Christ-like, as we live our lives toward him. Matthew Henry continues, But I'd rather take it more generally that they may be the saints and ministers duly qualified, made capable to, you know, made capable to, and be accepted of God. The office of ministry, and I underline this again, the office of the ministry is the purchase of Christ's blood in one of the blessed fruits of his satisfaction and owes its virtue and value to Christ's merit. I'm not a pastor because I learned a lot of verses. I'm not a pastor because I'm willing to do some things. And, and, and I'm a pastor. And this is how I approach my, my role here, and, and I believe the elders do as well. I'm a pastor because Christ Jesus has paid for that office. Christ Jesus has paid for the office in which you serve. Christ Jesus has paid for the ministry in which you serve. You and I can have that same assurance as we serve. And people say, boy, he sings terrible. But he sings for the Lord. His voice was paid for. And he sings with joy. The priests, again, Matthew Henry, the priests were under the law, were consecrated by the blood of bulls or goats, but the gospels of ministry, that's you and I. We are, gospel, we are ministers of the gospel of reconciliation, but the gospel ministers, that we are consecrated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, that's powerful, guys. That's, I don't care where you go or what you do, whether you're copper coins or spare change, you are there because of the blood of Jesus Christ paid for that. You're regardless of what you get paid, and regardless if anybody shows up, you're regardless of anything, the blood of Jesus Christ paid for you to be there to worship Him that day. Wonderful if you have an audience, but you have one who paid for the day. Enjoy it. Whether you're leading a, a men's breakfast, whether anybody shows up or not, the Lord has paid for you to be there. Be there with the Lord. Whether you're leading the women's fellowship. The Lord paid for you to be there. To be truly present. This sincerity. He paid for you to be there. Be there with Him if you have an audience or others with you. Praise the Lord. They're there for Him as well. 
Amen? Amen? When I look at this, this sanctifying thing, it, 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 it doesn't make sense, and yet it makes perfect sense to think about that Christ Jesus sanctified himself. He set himself totally apart to be there, to be 100% present on mission so that we could do the same. We don't serve God because Christ died. We are allowed to serve him by his death. Yeah. It, 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 are you with me today? I know this is crazy. Amen. Amen. I've been thinking about this verse for like a year and a half, so I, I got a little bit of a head start on you. I appreciate that, but man, think about that this week. You want something to be thankful for. <clears throat> think about that this week. I don't serve God. It's not a hey, thanks, because Christ died but I am allowed into the presence of God because of his death. I would want to serve him. I mean, I would want to serve, you know, like, like oh, race fans. How many race fans here? Okay, a couple. Slim crowd. What's your favorite car? Not driver, car. What's your favorite car? One filled with gas. One filled with gas, okay. <laughs> The Nissan Skyline. The Nissan Skyline. Okay, well, I'm thinking NASCAR. I'm thinking, okay. I'll make it easy for you. Here's where I'm going. Let's say your favorite car is the Ford. Oh. Okay, let's say your favorite car is the Ford, right? And you love the Ford. Now, because of the Ford, you get to root for the driver. Okay? It's the same, it's kind of the same way with us. I, you know, I would love the Lord. Because of who he is and what he's done. He's just, he, God is such an amazing role model to us, isn't he? Yes. But we can't have access to fully worship him, to fully experience him in this room today without the death of Jesus Christ. We're just, we're just too fallen without Christ. We would perish because of our sins. But because of the death of Jesus Christ, we're allowed into that room with God Almighty. Amen? Amen. It's so powerful. For their sakes, for our sakes, he sanctified himself. He set himself apart to be truly there, to be truly on mission so that we could do the same thing. As his followers, regarding his sanctification, I think that gives us some things. As his followers, thinking about the sanctification that Christ has given us, we can live in great assurance of his effectiveness. Amen? You and I can live in great assurance of the effectiveness of Christ's sanctification and of his crucifixion. We can live in great assurance of that. That's good. That's something to be thankful for this week, isn't it? I, you know, I, I'm a human being and I stumble and sometimes and then I wonder why in the world would God save me, but it's, his blood is pretty effective. His plan is pretty effective. It's not based on anything that I can do. And as I go through life, I don't know if, you, if you've been there and, and you, you're worried about whether you could lose your salvation. You're worried about whether, whether a family member could lose their salvation. You're worried about if a friend could lose their salvation. You're basing it on the wrong thing. The blood of Jesus Christ has sealed that salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed. We can live in great assurance of the effectiveness of Christ's life, of Christ's sacrifice. We can also live in great satisfaction of what makes available to us his followers. We can live in great satisfaction of that. We have every single thing we need for a life of blessing. Everything we need for a life of blessing. Now there are things that we might want, <laughs> desire, and all that kind of stuff, and, and maybe God will give them to us if it's part of his will, and maybe that, that will work out. But as far as a life of blessing, as far as being content in who I am, knowing God and being content in that relationship, I have everything available to me, and you have everything available to you to live a life of peace and blessing. With God Almighty, through Christ Jesus, it's in his word. And he is not a liar. Amen. He has made great things available to his followers. And we can live in great satisfaction that those things are available to us because Christ has paid for them with his blood. 
He has paid for your peace with his blood. He has paid for your healing with his blood. He has paid for your satisfaction, joy in this life. He's paid for your relationship. He's paid for your future spouse. He's paid for your future children. He has paid for it with his blood. Amen? And the third thing that we as his followers have is great confidence in the witness that it will produce. Yes. Great confidence. That's, that's his word. Yeah. Jesus, this is red letter stuff, guys. Yeah. Huh? This is not me making this up, trying to work up an emotion in you. Yeah. Okay, this is Jesus talking about this. We can have great confidence in the witness that it would produce. Now, I have friends, and, and Beverly has friends, and I'm sure you have the same. We have friends who are not followers of Jesus Christ breaks my heart. They're not followers of Jesus Christ, and they've made that pretty clear. But you know what they'll do? They'll ask us to pray for them. Yes. Man. And, and she knows me. I'll be happy to pray with you. Well, I, I just meant, you know, pray for them when you get to get... I'll be happy to pray with you. Give me your hands. Amen. It is great witness when we are in a loving, joyful relationship with one another in God Almighty in Christ. Amen? And, and that is a witness to the world around you. You're not sure you're a great evangelist? Megan, are you not sure you're a great evangelist? <laughs> God will make an evangelist through the relationships and it's a witness that you have yes. with others. Amen? <laughs> Sandy, God will do the same. Just as you're in a loving community and you share the story, share the story, share the story of Jesus and what he's done. Just that alone. You don't have to tell people about their sins. They're aware of them. Trust me. They know what they need. And if we can bring them to Christ, Christ will love on them and clean them up just like any other lamb in his, in his flock. He'll clean them up and love on them and care for them. And they will come and serve him and they'll listen for his voice as well. Amen? Amen. So beautiful. That's something to be thankful for. I don't know about you guys. I, I have so much to be thankful for this week. Well, I want, to, I want to be thankful for a specific group of people today. And this is where I said that I just had no idea picking this verse, how this would all work out. And so when I was doing this, so I'm like, okay, God, yeah, you're just showing off again. Okay, God. <laughs> was this, this week, I wanted to choose the week after the elections, and I, which I didn't pick the day of the elections, did I? We, we just kind of like agreed upon that as a, a nominations round. And, the, and the, the board there. I want to be thankful for a group of people who have set themselves apart. Who have set themselves apart, quite like Christ did, uh, for the service, for the benefit, and the blessing of others. This past week, this past Wednesday, we had our elections, uh, our annual meeting and our elections. And there were a group of people that, and I'm not, don't worry, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you stand up here. I'm not going to do a huge thing like that unless Dale wants to. <laughs> I'm learning the rhythm here, so... Uh, but those people who, who said, yeah, I, I'll do that. I will serve the church in that way, in that capacity. And in your serving, you are, you are helping to strengthen the us, the one another of us. But you're also helping to strengthen the witness to the community. That not only is this church a church worth serving, but our God is a God worth serving. Amen? And so... I, I, you know, Christ's part was that he gave himself for this church to sanctify it, that, that he designed the end and also the means. And so I just wanted to, to read to you. I'm going to read these off, and then we're going to pray for these folks. Um, and there are copies of this. If you did not receive a copy of this, they're on the back uh, where you come in where the bulletins are. But as far as our board of elders, it was approved uh, for the elders. Of course, me, I was approved. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, John Sensenick, Dale Campbell, and Jim Wallace have, uh, have been approved again to serve as elders. And I thank you for your faithful leadership. You guys know greater than I the sacrifice these men have made over the past few years. Uh, and with humble hearts, humble hearts, I'm, I'm just, if it's okay for a guy to be impressed, I'm impressed. Uh, for the church leadership team, those, those folks who have said, you know what, we want to listen to the congregation. We want to have a pulse of the congregation, what's going on here. We want to work with the elders to help these things come out uh, well. For those who are on the church leadership team, as a secretary would be Beverly, um, our treasurer, Don Foote, assistant treasurer, Claudine Campbell, 
a missionary treasurer, Don Foote. So you have a hat with two brims on it, I think. Thank you, Donnie. Uh, missions Committee Chair, Barb, no, Disciple Making Committee Chair, Barb Sensenig, uh, and Dennis Sutherland also uh, agreeing to serve again. Thank these guys. Be thankful for these guys, that they're willing to give of their time and uh, talent to do these things. Uh, currently, as far as deacons, that is the governing board of elders, but I, I will be so bold as to pray that God will bring in deacons to work specifically with the deaconesses to make sure that the physical needs of the congregation uh, are met, and I'm, I'm not shy about that. Um, I'm praying that God will raise up some deacons in this church. Not that the elders aren't doing a good job, but uh, I think that's a role. But as far as the deaconesses, uh, we have Jenny Bronson, Kay Foote, and Billie Jean White, and we want to honor Arlene Sampson. Thank you, Arlene. We want to honor you guys for your service. Uh, trustees, the same as the Governing Board of Elders, Jim Wells, John Sensenig, and Dale Campbell. That's, that's the, the, the church leadership team and the various trustees. Um, and I want to thank those folks for that. I also want to uh, mention those on the mission committee would be Billy Jean White and David Buckman. So one who has been on the mission field, one who has a heart for the mission field. I, I, man, I'm excited to see what God is going to do this year. Um, the audit committee, Jim Wells and Dennis Sutherland, I want to thank uh, you guys for making sure that we stay honest. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the Disciple Making Committee, which is chart, uh, chaired, rather, not chaired. You're, you're scorching them. Uh, you cracked the whip. Chaired. I don't know why. I, I must be thinking of like barbecue or something. I'm getting hungry up here. Chaired. Chaired. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how that would look. I want to. Uh, chaired by Barb Sensing. So we have the secretary is Brianna Campbell, uh, treasurer Billie Jean White. And a new member to the group is Sandy Shea. So thank you guys so much. So Christ has done his part. He gave himself to the church. He sanctified the church. He has washed it by the, by the renewing of his blood. He has designed the ends and the means. This is our part as a group. This, this huge list of servants that have chosen to sanctify a portion of their lives for the service of the church. Our part is this. I believe Paul wrote it best in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So for those folks who have chosen to sanctify themselves, that the church might be sanctified, for those folks who have, I want us to pray for those folks who have chosen to accept roles of authority uh, and position in the church, volunteer uh, position of authority in the church, so that we can have a tranquil church, so that we can have a quiet church. Now, I don't mean noise quiet. I, don't, I, I want kids running up and down the aisles. I want that thing. So, so don't worry about it if you bring it. It's okay. But I want a church that exhibits godliness and the dignity of our calling. Amen. And these leaders are giving themselves of themselves to have it. So we want to pray for them. Amen. We want to pray for them. Consecrate ourselves to help to serve them. Paul says, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Amen. Amen. So, uh, again, I'm not going to ask uh, all these folks to come forward, but if you would join with me in prayer, and this is how we will close this morning's uh, service. If you'll join with me in prayer, I want to pray for these people. If you're near these people, I encourage you to, to you know, maybe just put your hand on and pray for them, hold their hand, however, uh, however is appropriate. Um, but let's, I mean, I want to earnestly pray for these people. Earnestly. In truth, in that sincerity, honestly, I want you to be 100% there. Would you do that with me? Father in heaven, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for all that has been accomplished today uh, for your glory. Father, I thank you for the time of worship, that we were able to lift up our hearts and our souls to you, that we were able to lift our voices to you. I thank you for that. I'm, I'm truly thankful for that. Father, I am thankful for the time to give to you today, Lord, in whatever way it is, whether it is giving a financial offering or giving uh, in serving, whether it's in a Sunday school or even just giving my best attention to worship you. Father, I'm thankful for the many opportunities that we've had to give to you, to give of ourselves to you today. I'm thankful for that. Father, I'm thankful for the ministry of the word that we are, we are called and we are drawn in by the life of Jesus Christ. 
and that we want to choose him to be our Lord and our lead. That we want him to be not just the Savior of our eternal soul, but the Lord of our earthly life. And I praise you, Father, that you have revealed your Son to us through your word. May it ever be precious to us. I thank you for that. As he sanctified himself, he made it possible that we could sanctify ourselves. Father, for these list of people that we have read off, first and foremost, Lord, I pray that they would do this in your power and in your might. This is not their office to hold, and this is nothing that they can accomplish in and of themselves, and we recognize that. We can only hold these offices because Christ Jesus has paid for these offices. He has paid for himself to be glorified through our serving and through our worship and giving. And I thank you for that. Father, I lift up these elders to you. Those who have taken this mantle upon them, Lord, they've received this mantle of leadership in the church, and, and we don't take that lightly. I pray for the elders, Father. I pray that you would bestow upon them an insight and a wisdom into what your kingdom is doing and the needs and how we as a church can best serve your kingdom. I pray for these elders, Lord, that you would guard their families. Lord, that you would protect their families, that no harm would come against them, that you would put a hedge about them by your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for those on the church leadership team. Give us humility and great wisdom. Give us humility and great wisdom, Lord, that we would decrease so that your church could increase. That our voice would be given so that the Son could be glorified. I praise you for that, Father. Lord, I pray the same, that you would strengthen them and give them uh, the might and the courage to do this job. That you would protect their family, that you would guard their time. Bless them, Lord, as they serve you. Father, thank you for the deacons and deaconesses. Lord, those who have put a special eye on the physical needs of the congregation. When they look and they see someone hurting, when they look and they see someone in need, they reach out. They're the first line of love and care in this church. And I thank you for them, Lord. Thank you for their years of faithful service. Bless them, Lord, with humility and wisdom. And guard their families, Lord. Father, I thank you for those positions of trustee and missions committee. Lord, I pray for those who are auditing. I lift them up to you as well. And the disciple-making committee. Lord, thank you so much for these people who have chosen to step in, Lord, and to step up. Lord, thank you for them. I pray, Lord, that you would give them great discernment over your word and the needs of the congregation, that they would be present with the congregation and help to, to lead us to the throne, to walk us into your glory. I thank you for that, Lord. Give us strength and an integrity to their service here. Help them to serve humbly and with power. Protect them and their families as they serve, Lord. They are near and dear to your heart, and I thank you for that. Father, thank you for all the good things that you've done. Thank you, Lord. This is a week to be thankful. We're not thankful for the founding of America. We're thankful for a God who got us through a difficult time. We're thankful for the God who gets us through this time and all the times ahead. This is not a national holiday. This is, to me, a very religious holiday. I give my thanks to God, my Amen. risen Savior. Amen. And so we thank you, and we praise you, and with great joy we prepare our hearts to sing one more worship song to you. And we love you, Lord Jesus. We love you. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Bless the Lord, please.